Hi, I'm Becky Streepy from Glue and Glitter, and today we're making chocolate peanut butter energy balls. Y'all, I try to stay away from special ingredients in my recipe, but to make these energy balls, you do need powdered peanut butter. Luckily, it's pretty easy to find powdered peanut butter at most grocery stores now. So just check like the natural foods aisle, you'll probably be able to find it there. And if you can't, you can order it online for a pretty good price. The reason that you need powdered peanut butter is because the way that conventional peanut butter cups are made is you use conventional peanut butter and you mix it with lots of powdered sugar that adds sweetness, but it also changes the texture. And that's one of the big reasons that you use so much powdered sugar in peanut butter cups to get that sticky gooey peanut butter to a dough-like consistency. With powdered peanut butter, you don't reconstitute it all the way. That way you don't have to add any extra sugar to get it to the consistency you need for the middles of these. Start with three quarters of a cup of powdered peanut butter. You can use any brand that you like. And then add a nice generous pinch of salt. I have made these without the salt and I will say they're good, but they are much better with this little bit of salt. Even just a little pinch goes a long way to really bring out the flavor of the peanut butter, especially because we're not adding any sweeteners or anything else to enhance that flavor. Next, you're going to whisk those dry ingredients together and then add a quarter cup of water and start stirring. And as you stir with your fork, you'll notice that you can achieve like a crumbly dough, but you're not going to get a cohesive ball of dough like you want. Once your dough is nice and crumbly, you're going to get in there with clean hands and just knead it together until your peanut butter mixture kind of reaches like a play-doh consistency. Once your dough has reached that play-doh consistency, you're going to form it into 16 little one inch peanut butter balls. And I recommend that you stick the peanut butter balls into the fridge for about 15 minutes. That'll firm them up so they'll hold up a lot better to the next step where you're coating them in chocolate. All that you need for the chocolate coating is vegan chocolate chips. A lot of dark chocolate chips are accidentally vegan, or you can find chocolate chips often that are labeled vegan friendly, or if you find any that are labeled allergy friendly, milk is a common allergen, it's a top eight. So um, allergy friendly chips are also accidentally vegan. To melt your chocolate chips, get three quarters of a cup of chocolate chips and put it into a microwave safe bowl. If you don't do microwaves, you can do this in a double boiler instead. Um, so you go do you and I'm going to give the microwave directions and then no one's going to yell at me about using my microwave because I love my microwave. So take those chocolate chips and then put them in the microwave on high for 45 seconds. Take them out and give them a stir. Chances are they won't be melted all the way yet, but you'll notice that when they stir, the chips are going to start melting under your fork. It's kind of like magic. Once you get this nice and stirred and even, if you still have lumps of chocolate chips, Stick them back in the microwave on high for another 30 seconds and then take it out and stir again. This two bursts worked fine for me, but if you need to melt them more, you can just do 30 more seconds. You can even drop it to 15 if it's just a couple of lumps that you can't get rid of. Just make sure that you're stirring in between because you'll notice that they're a lot melt more melted than they seem. And if you microwave them for too long, they'll burn and that's disgusting. Now that your chocolate is melted, pull those peanut butter balls out of the fridge and you're gonna just coat them right in the chocolate mixture. Do this one ball at a time, drop it into the chocolate mixture and then use your fork to kind of roll it around and get it evenly coated. You don't want a thick coating of chocolate, just a nice even coating is all you need. Once your peanut butter ball is totally coated in chocolate, use the fork to pull it out. I like to let it stand for like just a second because some excess chocolate will drizzle off and then kind of pull the bottom of the fork along the edge of the bowl. And that'll help prevent you having like a pool of chocolate at the bottom of each peanut butter ball. I mean, even if you do make it this messy, it's gonna taste the same. That's just a looks thing. So get all of those peanut butter balls coated and onto a lined baking sheet and then stick that in the freezer for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, pull them out and they are ready to eat. I like to store these in the refrigerator because they do tend to get a little bit melty if you leave them out on the counter. It really depends on how warm it is in your house. Like in the winter time when it's a little cooler, you probably could store them just out in your pantry, but in the summer when it gets pretty warm in the house, they'll get pretty melty if you don't keep them in the fridge. I hope that this video has answered all of your questions about how to make these chocolate peanut butter energy bites. If you have any questions that I didn't address in the video, feel free to drop a comment. I'm always happy to help. And don't forget to rate and subscribe. 
Happy cooking!